The evolution of architectural drawings spans across thousands of years, and with the consequences of countless technological advancements, it's hard to deny just how much architectural representation has evolved. From pyramid constructions on papyrus paper to computer algorithms generating ideal architectural scenarios, let's take a look at how this evolution took place. Hand Drawing Era as impactful as Egyptians are, long before our favorite mummified architects, the earliest form of drawings are actually found to be in Saudi Arabia and Jordan. About 9,000 years ago, Neolithic humans drew plants called desert kites, which are known to be hunting traps made from dry stone walls. Then, etch these aerial view plants into massive stone tablets. These etchings are found in locations such as Jebal al Kazbaihe in Jordan and Jebal al Ziliat in Saudi Arabia. A mere 6,000 years and many uncovered lost artifacts and destroyed civilizations later, the era of hand drawing continued to prove itself through many material forms. These contexts include papyrus paper, wax tablets, and parchment paper. The first architectural drawing on papyrus paper was the plan of the tomb Amenemhate II, which provided a detailed layout of the royal tomb complex. After all, the Egyptians believed the most significant thing you could do in your life was die. I digress. Hand-drawn architectural drawings continued to significantly develop during the Middle Ages with the common usage of parchment paper, and the earliest known architectural drawing on parchment paper was the plan of St. Gall Monastery in Switzerland, which also includes probably the most stunning library you'll ever see. Although the plan of St. Gall may not be the absolute earliest example, it is one of the most well-preserved architectural drawings on parchment paper. Moreover, parchment paper continued to slay for several centuries due to its durability for detailed work, but started declining after the increasing usage of paper. The first example of a piece of architectural drawing on paper that was printed and widely distributed was Sebastian Serlio's Tutte le opere d'architettura e prostetiva, which was published in 1537. As printing in the Renaissance became significantly popular, examples such as Andrea Palladio's Quattro Libri dell'Architettura, Alberti's De Rea Edificatoria, and Michelangelo's architectural drawings became widely distributed as well. Before we fall victim to the bubonic plague, let's conclude the hand drawing era and acknowledge that we have definitely come a long way in the setting of architectural drawings. Pre-CAD Era the process of hand drawing becomes a bit more standardized when Alois Sennefelder invents lithography in 1796, just before the Industrial Revolution. In lithography, artists draw with greasy materials on a stone, chemically treated to separate the water from the ink, apply ink again to the hole of the stone, and then press paper onto it, attracting the inks with each other to create detailed prints. Notable architectural lithographies in the 19th century include architectural studies of Sir John Soane's and the Normandy Villas by Pierre Chabat. Considering the amount of labor that went to creating these masterpieces, they are definitely pieces that deserve the admiration. Moving forward, the pre era continued to expand in the 20th century with materials such as graph, tracing, and blueprint paper, along with mylar and vellum. The biggest difference between pre and post era is that architects use tools like drawing boards, pencils, erasers, and T-squares instead of computers. However, this also meant that there was no margin for error, no chance of returning after the drawing is put on paper, and probably also destroyed the poor architect's postures. So, in other words, not a lot has changed since then. Well, at least not until CAD arrived. Post-CAD era The revolutionary context of CAD, aka computer-aided design, simply changed the game. In 1961, Dr. Patrick Hanratty, who is regarded as the father of CAD, developed the software DAC, Design Automated by Computer, under the company General Motor Research Laboratories. DAC was the first CAD system to use interactive graphics and was useful in the auto industry for designing molds. But sadly, the company discarded the system because of its obsoleteness. Hanratty claims that 70% of all 3D CAD systems available today trace their roots back to his original code. Hats off to Hanratty. Later, in 1963, Ivan Sutherland was busy developing Sketchpad, the first ever graphic user interface with an XY pointer display, which allowed users to draw objects. Sketchpad is still considered a major breakthrough in the development of computer graphics and the interaction between humans and computer. Moving on, the evolution of CAD continued with programs such as CADD by Aerospace Manufacturing Corporation McDonnell Douglas, PDGS, and internally developed CAD system 
by Ford and DigiGraphics by ITEK, which was a system sold for the cheap price of $500,000. Breaking free from the boring norms of two-dimensional systems, in 1972, Cintavision was developed by McGee. While technically not a CAD program, it was recognized as being one of the earliest 3D visualization programs, creating complex 3D visual effects and animations for movies such as Star Trek and Tron. More and more, the CAT ecosystem developed itself by the late 70s, with programs like CADAM, used for aerospace and defense industries, Unigraphics by Siemens, which offered robust parametric design capabilities, and MiniCAD, which was the best-selling CAT software for Mac computers by the time. Finally, the moment we have all been waiting for, AutoCAD was released in 1982 by Autodesk. It became, and still is, one of the most widely used CAD programs, setting the standard for CAD software and offering low-cost accessibility for a broad range of users. The era post AutoCAD offers many more programs, such as Pro Engineer, SolidWorks 95, Katia, and more. Yet later, in 1996, 3D Studio Max was released by Autodesk, which was, and still is, widely used for modeling and animation. And finally, Rhino, which was released in 1998 by Robert McNeil and Associates. Rhino introduced NURPS modeling tools that were significant for complex computational design tasks and to this day protects its relevance and industry. Other significant software include Revit, which was released by Autodesk in the year 2000 and is one of the most widely used BIM software that also supported parametric design. The list goes on, but for the sake of this video, let's take a look at our next era. AI integration Love it or hate it, it's here and it's here to stay. In the recent years, AI has significantly impacted architectural practices, yet its integration into the architectural practices did not happen overnight. We can't start explaining the impact of AI in architecture without mentioning one of the most significant generative design tools, which is Grasshopper for Rhino, released in 2007. Although not an AI tool on its own, Grasshopper set the basis for generative design. The plugin allowed for parametric design capabilities and profoundly influenced architectural design. The integration of AI into the industry became more widely available after the late 2010s, with tools including Finch, Makeit, Midjourney, and more. But at this point, the advancement of architectural drawings have progressed so much that it becomes rather a controversial topic. As beneficial as AI can be, it is inevitably inclined to be repetitive and inaccurate. A big question mark here is what happens when the creation process of such a human-centered creative field is left in the hands of a computer-generated algorithms. AI will never stop evolving, just like humans, yet its consequences on the context of architectural drawings seems to be positive so far. Thank you so much for watching and before we end, I want to spotlight Pacademy, an online architectural educational platform that spreads the idea of using parametric design, computational tools, and artificial intelligence in architecture. You can register and join the live workshops or watch the previous studio workshop recordings. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notifications to keep up with the new episodes. See you at the next episode!